You know, in additive manufacturing, stereo lithography is a popular part making method, but simply printing the part is not the end of the process. There's some post-processing that has to go on and that's largely historically been a manual process and that of course adds a lot of variability in what could be an automated process and now it can be. I'm with Clark Anthony, he's head of field marketing for Forum Labs. Clark, I understand that of course Forum Labs is a well-known uh, SLA machinery supplier, but there's there's more to this than just yanking a part out of the machine and, and going... Yeah, a lot of people think that SLA is just the printer and to a larger extent the materials, but there's actually a whole process to it, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going from design to part, you need the software, but you also need the post-processing, and Formlabs is trying to offer the whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can you take us through the process here? Uh, we've got some part-making uh, machinery on hand on the table. We've also got some of your new equipment at the end here. Yeah, so... Um, Imagine you're trying to go from part to design, um, or sorry, design to part. Yep. Um, you have your STL file, you upload into our preform software, that uploads to the printer. This is an inverted SLA 3D printer, mm -hmm. uses a liquid photopolymer, and in our case a UV laser. Everywhere that laser is striking, polymerizing the plastic, that's the SLA process. But once you're done, you need a post process. So that's actually where form wash and form cure come in. So traditionally we've offered a finish kit with the printer that requires you to take the part off the platform and manually wash it. Mm -hmm. This takes a lot of that variability, like mm -hmm. you said earlier, out mm -hmm. of the process. Mm -hmm. Form wash is an automatic wash station. You can set the time uh, based on our line of resins for the to get the optimal uh, mechanical properties mm -hmm. by washing them for a very set amount of time. What are the consequences of a manual washing process in which you underwash or overwash the part? If you underwash the part, uh, you might not remove all of the liquid resin that remains on the surface mm -hmm. at the end of the part. Um, this could lead the part to be tacky. Mm -hmm. If you overwash the part, if you let it sit in the IPA too long, it can actually start to absorb that isopropyl alcohol, which then will compromise the integrity of the part. That's not to say that people don't have success doing it manually. We've shipped, you know, tons of units and people use them every day for their workflow, but this is just to help kind of streamline and automate that workflow to make it, make it so they can do their jobs and use 3D printing as a tool. How about the curing stage? So the curing station, kind of similar to the wash, um, to get the optimal mechanical properties, uh, especially with some of our more specialty resins, you need a specific heat and time cure cycle uh, to get those properties. Now, curing, of course, uh, curing historically, any sort of heat post process is kind of a black art. Mm -hmm. Historically, it's, it's um, uh, we have, there are some heat, heat, heat resistant, there's some heat tolerant resins out there, but there are also a lot of resins out there which do not like to be heated at all. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of temperature, time, time and temperature. Is there a specific profile? Because I'm used, used to a world, of course, where when you yep. cure something, you fire it into a hot oven, you walk away for an hour. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of a combination of all those things. Okay. Um, our, diff our resins have different cure profiles, and our materials team has done a lot of validation testing and continues to do so to make sure that we're providing the optimal time and temperature for each part. So for example, if you're printing in say our tough resin, it'll we will provide you the right temperature and time to get the best mechanical properties for that part. We're taking a lot of the guesswork out of it. So in the case of the machine then, is it you would uh, input um, um, a cycle specifically or is that, is that part of the program? It's uh, right now, uh, the way it works is when a part um, enters the cure chamber, let me restart this. Um, we have uh, recommended settings for each type of our resins, so you will be able to turn on a heater to a specific temperature. We can go all the way from 35 to 80 degrees Celsius. Um, so let's just set, let's just turn the heater off for now, though, uh, and then you will be able to set the time. Um, so let's just go for 17 minutes, say, um, and then it'll automatically, uh, if we were to heat it, it will automatically turn on the heater, raise it to the proper temperature, and then turn on the lights. And then there's a um, kind of a lazy Susan in there, turntable, so uh, everything gets the proper amount of light. Well, Clark, it, it seems no more complex than programming a microwave oven. Exactly, that's the point. It's supposed to be a very easy interface for the user. Um, you know, people have jobs to do. Engineers are designing things, building things, right? They don't need to, they need to be using 3D printing as a tool. Yes, we've kind of moved past the, uh, the stage where it's just early adopters who are doing this for the love of 3D printing. Now people need a turnkey solution, and that's what we're trying to offer. Do you expect that uh, that engineering teams, manufacturers, part makers will buy uh, the entire process from top to bottom? Do you expect them to buy the printer first and then come in afterward and then add the, the post-processing equipment? I think there's room for both. I think there's people who are going to get the printer first and once once they see what it's able to do uh, and once they start integrating it into their workflows, they'll understand the value of, being, of taking that post-processing and taking a lot of the manual labor out of it. Um, we do have current customers who have you know been chomping at the bit for this and we're, we're happy to finally bring it to market. Turnkey art-to-part processing from Form Labs, says Clark Anthony.